Welcome to my lecture online. Unlike the Earth, where the temperature as you go further and further up into the atmosphere first gets colder, then gets warmer, then gets colder, then gets warmer again, the temperature gradient on Jupiter is quite different and quite simple. As you go further down into the planet, it gets warmer and warmer because of the higher pressure, creates greater temperature, and of course the core of the planet is very hot, so any of the heat that comes from within the planet towards the surface would carry that additional heat. So the further you go into the planet, the warmer it gets. Then as you get further into the atmosphere, the temperature continues to cool down because essentially you're now more than five times as far away from the sun as the Earth is. You don't receive a lot of heat from the sun, so it's very cold near the cloud tops. But then as you go further up again, because of the impact of the solar winds and the radiation, the ultraviolet radiation, all that that interacts with the higher upper atmosphere, the region that we call the thermosphere, there a lot of that energy is, is absorbed and that of course creates a higher temperature. So you can see that the temperature gradient down when you're about 100 kilometers below the supposed surface. Again, we have the surface uh, at the one atmosphere point, so when you're about 100 kilometers below that surface, about 60 miles into the planet, the temperature is about 400 Kelvin, which is a little bit above the boiling point of water, so it's becoming quite hot. If you're down to about 50 kilometers, about 30 miles below the point where the atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere, where you begin to get into the water ice layer and the modium hydrosulfide ice layer, the cloud regions there that contain predominantly those, uh, those elements, then you can see that the temperature has now reached about 300 Kelvin. It's actually a little bit cooler than that, a little bit below 300 Kelvin. So roughly room temperature. If you want to find a comfortable place to live on Jupiter, it would be below the water ice layer. Of course, at that point, you talk about atmospheric pressures, about seven, eight, nine atmospheres. So you'd better have something to protect you against that enormous pressure of the atmosphere. Then as you get further up, when you get down to about the zero kilometer point, which is where the atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere, now notice the temperature is quite cold. We're now down to about 200 Kelvin, which is minus 73 degrees Celsius. So now we're talking about temperatures that are like the frigid winters in the Antarctic, and maybe in some cases, when it gets extremely cold in Siberia, you might reach temperatures about this cold. So that is at the uh, at the region where we can say the planet starts and the atmosphere ends as you go down towards the planet. Above that, notice the temperature continues to decrease as the air gets thinner. Uh, you get further away from the planet, any of the heat that might come from the planet. There's not as much heat retained that we receive from the sun. And so now the temperature near the top of the cloud covers, as we call it, just above the haze layer. We're now at the top of the troposphere. The temperature has gone down to about minus, ooh, <laughs> Not minus, of course, because that would be impossible. There's no possible way that you could be below zero Kelvin. So essentially, 115 Kelvin to 125 Kelvin is the temperature at the very uh, top of the clouds. That's the coldest region in the atmosphere. If you then go any higher than that, you can see that the temperature then begins to increase again until you reach a high of about 900 Kelvin near the top of the thermosphere when you begin to enter into the exosphere. There the air is so thin that it really almost makes no sense to talk about temperature and by then of course the temperature uh, goes way down as you no longer have the accumulation of atmospheric content to keep yourself warm. So that's what the temperature gradient looks like in Jupiter, very simple. As you go into the planet, it gets warmer. As you go above the planet into what we would call the upper atmosphere, the troposphere, you see it gets colder and colder. Once you get past the troposphere into the stratosphere, then it gets quite warm again. Again, it's not like you can go there and sunbathe at those altitudes because it would still be frigidly cold, but it's the speed at which the molecules move from which we calculate their temperatures that would then give you those very high numbers. So we're talking about temperatures of well over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit or in the five, six, seven hundred degrees Celsius range once you get to the upper part of the, of the thermosphere. So that's it. That is what we call the temperature gradient of Jupiter. Well, no, this is essentially what you'd call the air temperature. But the, the question would be, what would you read if you put a thermometer there? 
And I don't think you will read those high temperatures on a thermometer because of the cooling effect of the radiation into space would offset the temperature of the actual molecules themselves. The molecules themselves don't have the temperature, it's the speed at which the molecules move that are translated into a temperature. So, yeah, it wouldn't, you put a thermometer there, you wouldn't read those, those high temperatures. So when does it get cold again? Because space itself is very cold. So once you get into the exosphere, that's when the temperature dissipates. There's not enough molecules there to indicate a high temperature like that, and then you would get into the cool, the coolness of space. Yeah. yeah but if you have a drawing of that, it's still going up. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just put a little line here to indicate that you're still within the thermosphere when you're reaching those high temperatures. Anything above that in the exosphere, um, you can no longer talk about temperature at that point. So what does it get cold? Uh, well, we're talking about, we're at about a thousand kilometers, so once you're like 600 miles away from the surface, the supposed surface of the planet, at that point it would be, yeah, become really cold. There's this region where it's kind of a mix of the two, right? I mean, how fast would it get cold? Is it well, you would freeze to death <laughs> no. anywhere, anywhere uh, in the atmosphere. Um, so again, thermometer cold, it would be extremely cold up here, but the molecules are moving really fast. You go above that, there's so few molecules, you can no longer think of that as being a hot region because the molecules are so simply not there. They're so rarefied that you can't call it anymore. So it's kind of a, a mis a misrepresentation when you think about that, right? So when you're really that high up, when you're a thousand kilometers up. Is it really that hot? Would you burn up? And if you, no, you would freeze to that, even though it's 900 Kelvin. What about when you said that it's uh, <clears throat> 27 degrees Celsius? Oh, that would be nice. You would actually feel that temperature. So you would actually have room temperature at uh, a depth of about 50 kilometers into the surface. But the problem, of course, uh, you would be. So let's say you're at eight atmospheres. That would be. Um, Eight. So that would be if you're at a depth, if you dive down, if you're a scuba diver and you dive down about you know, 80 meters down below the surface, that's the kind of pressure you would be experiencing. At that depth, you have a nice comfortable temperature. And actually you put a thermometer out there and that's what you would read. So, so when does the thermometer temperature change in the atmosphere? Good question. So at this point, if you're at one atmosphere, you still would be measuring thermometer uh, when you're at this height, at one tenth of an atmosphere, you would still, it's still thick enough to measure thermometer temperature. So in this region, it's by the time you get into here, when you get well into the stratosphere, that the thermometer temperature would no longer match the temperature as measured by the speed of the molecules. Does Earth have that thing? Yeah, so Earth is the same thing on the Earth. When you go well into what we call the thermosphere of the Earth, it's very hot. But again, if you put a thermometer there, you would freeze to death, right? It would be very, very cold uh, to a person, but um, it would be very hot because the molecules are moving so fast. They're, they're absorbing enormous amount of energy from space, from the radiation of the sun, from the, the, uh, the particles impacting on the upper atmosphere. So the, the energy is there, but you would also be radiating out to space really fast because it's there's not a lot of atmosphere, so the influx of energy relative to the expenditure of heat, you'd be very, very cold that high up. All very good questions.